With the few days spent in Voar, the capital city of the Faroe Islands, it's time to continue across the Atlantic to our next destination, Keflavik. We have 280 miles of open water until we reach Iceland and uh, about 160 miles thereafter, making this a 440 mile long flight. Current weather setting uh, is just set to live weather. I don't know what the weather is at our destination and it doesn't really matter since we're going anyway. And I'll go ahead and speed this up. Just the pre-flight here we're going to knock out real quick. I uh, have the flight plan right here. It shows us direct to Keflavik. What I'm going to do is just put in one VOR between us and the destination. It's about 200 miles away, just on the east coast of Iceland, just as a backup in case something happens with the GPS. We'll have that saved there, and I'm going to go ahead and get everything else set up. I am not following the checklist. I don't know how to read, but it looks good, so we're going to flash the strobes, let them know that we're ready to start, and we'll get both the engines going. And pushback complete. We'll go ahead, set our parking brake, and give her a second to get a little ways from our aircraft. Now we'll go ahead and adjust the lighting. Uh, probably set that up and not really gonna, yeah, no, not gonna really mess with the floodlights too much. Uh, now we'll go ahead, flash the taxi light, let her know that we'll miss them, and we're ready to taxi. So this will be a short taxi. There's only one runway at this airport, so we'll have to back taxi, turn around at the end, and then we'll take off departing west. We'll get to the hold short line, contact tower, and then taxi.
quick update. Unfortunately, this layer of clouds was much denser than I first thought. Turns out starting our descent early was a bad decision. As you can see, we've started putting on more ice despite running the de-icing systems. Uh, as of about two minutes ago, we declared an emergency and have changed our airport to a slightly closer one, uh, Reykjavik. It's uh, not much closer, but we don't really have a whole lot of time and we don't want to be up here much longer. Once the wings and tails start getting ice, uh, not going to be a whole lot I can do. So we'll uh, update you when we get a little closer. Unfortunately, the situation has degraded to put us in a pretty bad spot. The avionics system doesn't want to load uh, any approach right now, and on top of that, our low fuel enunciators have come on. I planned on loading the RNAV approach to 3-1, uh, but it hasn't been loading properly. I can't seem to load anything. Uh, so the next closest uh, runway is runway 01, but that has the highest crosswind component. Uh, unfortunately, at this point, uh, whichever one loads is the one we're going with. You can see we're turning away from the airport now, and uh, that might seem counterintuitive, but uh, we're actually going to the final approach fix, quote unquote, uh, if you will, for this RNAV approach, just so we can activate it. Uh, as you can see from the map, there's no way we can do that entire procedure and still have enough fuel or worry about the ice for that matter. The plan is to go into a downwind basically just to get to that final approach fix. We'll turn base, final, hopefully activate the approach at the final approach fix, catch the made up glide slope uh, that it generates and hopefully find the runway. And once we are established on a published segment of the approach, you can see the approach finally activates. Unfortunately, it seems our luck is about as bad as possible. Our CDI sensitivity is still in in-route range, 
So the sensitivity for this approach will be based on two miles either side instead of point three miles, which you'll see soon uh, when it looks like I'm on course on the CDI, but uh, runway is actually further away just due to the sensitivity. Well, we made it. Everything going against us there, but now we're safely on the ground. I'm not sure how many of you out there uh, happen to notice, uh, but did you see the crosswind component? Right there on short final, it was 32 knots, which is way outside the limit for most planes, this one included. Thankfully though, we are through all of that now and safely on the ground. Unfortunately, it looks like I have some paperwork to fill out, and uh, if I still have my pilot's license after all this, I will see you all for the next leg of our journey across the Atlantic.